Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malefsky, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. Sitting in my hot seat today is a very special guest. Liron Gal is the Vice President of Product and Marketing at CyberHaven.com, CyberHaven. <laughs> yes. So welcome and tell us about CyberHaven. So CyberHaven helps companies uh, protect their IP and trade secrets from insider threats. Uh, we do this through a unique approach that we call DABA. That stands for Data Behavior Technology, Data Behavior Analysis. Uh, How does data behave? Exactly. That's a really good question. Uh, traditional solutions uh, today uh, either look at user behavior analysis, uh, which can get very noisy and also doesn't necessarily correlate to sensitive data. Mm -hmm. um, or they really look at data from an incident by incident basis, um, which creates a lot of noise because that isn't focused on really on your sensitive data and your IP. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do, um, we look at all the data events that happen in an organization, any file that's uploaded to a website, uh, copied to a USB device, um, uploaded to the cloud, sent over email, really any activity that you can think of, we collect all those events, um, we index them and store the metadata, and then that's where our technology really kicks in. We reconstruct the entire flow of events that happened. So we know if you, let's say, downloaded a report from Salesforce that contains um, all the companies account, top 20 account uh, details, uh, then downloaded it to your own endpoint and um, copied it to your personal Dropbox. Ron, let me ask you a question. DLP, it's been around for a long time. Are we talking about endpoint technology? Are we talking about agents or are we looking at packets and payloads and traffic with some kind of thing off the span port? So we cover all data silos. Um, one of the limitations of DLP today is that they either cover endpoints, uh, servers, emails, or cloud. And if it's cloud, then it's certain cloud applications. Um, we have agents to cover what ha what's happening within your company's uh, environment. And we cover everything, all data going to the cloud, coming from the cloud. And we also have connectors um, that connect through APIs to see what's happening in the cloud. Like uh, Salesforce. And Dropbox. Exactly. How many connectors do you have, and are you going to write many more connectors because there's so many apps moving to SaaS? So that's a really good question. The problem with um, like a lot of the solutions out there that they're uh, dependent on the number of connectors that they have. Uh, so we see all traffic going to a certain cloud platform and from a certain cloud platform without having to develop a specific connector. That's amazing. How did you guys do this? Is it proprietary? Can you tell us? <laughs> well, we have uh, we were founded by five very smart people. Mm -hmm. um, they actually uh, met in a PhD program in a very well known in the university in Switzerland called EPFL. Um, one of the founders was actually their um, professor in, while getting their PhD. Very cool. Um, Big data people. Uh, AI. The, Where's the uh, brain? Big pop? data. Big data. Yeah. Okay. Um, so really, we see once we're installed on endpoints, um, then we see everything that's happening in the company environment. Uh, so if we see something coming down from AWS, for example, someone downloading a file, um, there are a lot of ways to get that information with even without a connector to AWS. Uh, you don't have to have the connector. Exactly. And Only what, what if kind of for traffic that's happening within, within AWS okay. is when you need the connector. Okay. And what like um, what any any endpoint is a mobile phone an endpoint? So we co mobile phone is usually accesses data company data through um, like cloud HTML five the cloud uh, yeah or, so that's or, that's when our API connectors uh, come in like so Salesforce if you, connector exactly or, yeah okay very cool yeah so we have connectors for the standard applications like uh, other companies have really the uniqueness is that we cover every single application okay. without you having to know what applications are being used in your environment and having to plan for that as well. You're in a hot seat, so I have to give you some tough questions, and then we'll wrap <laughs> up. You ready? Yes. What if my phone has company records on it, and then I connect to a car that I rented somewhere, and then that car connects to some cloud app or something? I mean, I don't even know where this is all going nowadays. Everything's got an IP address, every, you know, an address. Everything's connected on the Internet, and it's corporate data moving around from mobile device to some other location. Is this an area that uh, CyberHaven is already working on or could be working on to help us? So we aren't working on um, more. That's more IoT mm -hmm. uh, today. That's not something we're focusing on. We are um, 
covering, uh, like I said, the cloud platforms, SaaS and IaaS. Okay. Uh, so I- theoretically, is, uh, I- infrastructure I- as a service. Because I've heard uh, so. <laughs> identity and access management, I am, but I don't <laughs> want to be called something else. I- um, infrastructure as a service. Yeah, so AWS, we, Azure, Do you think we have Google too many Cloud. acronyms in our, in our field? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and some of those um, acronyms... I think the to... world would be a much better place if we all use names instead of acronyms. So I have to make a little joke. I w- went to a trade show once and they said, next year's trade show is going to be IP for IT. Internet <laughs> protocol... Four, right? <laughs> Internet protocol for IP telephony. And I said, I think you need to change the name of the show. Too many acronyms, but... I, 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 I'm all also about identity and access management lately. It seems to be a hot area. But really, where are our identities stored? And is identity a piece of data? Um, identi- we don't see identities as a piece of data. And a lot of the uh, difficulty with identities is if you don't have an, an identity access management solution in place, um, then you don't have any correlation between what your user is when you're accessing um, local network shares or local uh, laptop. So that's a one on one do before we call you. Like we have to get our act together. Uh, so for, do that's what you need an identity access management solution for, ideally. Uh, ideally, you're using one of those. Many companies still don't use them. Or if they use them, they don't have a correlation between the cloud identity and the on-premise identity. Um, so if they're when they're trying to solve their, especially their IP uh, and trade secrets problem through a traditional DLP or UBA, then they're losing a lot of the context of this This user just did this action on-prem. Uh, so in the example I gave earlier, he downloaded a report from Salesforce to his endpoint. Um, that's something that uh, maybe a CASB will see, that d- uh, download from... More acronyms. Um, cloud Access Security Broker, and which UBA, is more of a... It's not user um, behavioral anomaly. User it's, behavioral analytics. Uh, yeah. Analytics, not anomaly detection, uh, which would be U- UBA. could be... UEBA, yeah. UBA, okay. it's, no, it's U- See why I'm talking with, yeah. The one lesson in life is within another, using within another year or two, we're going to be so acronymed out, nobody's going to know what we're talking about. They're going to think <laughs> we're having a coded conversation. Check out Pig Latin. I don't know if you've used the language, but you can go off the grid with Pig Latin. Just take the first letter, put it at the end, and add A-Y. <laughs> right? So, like firewall would be Irewall Fay. <laughs> Too many acronyms. Yeah. But you guys at Cyber Haven yes. have created a way to get this data problem under control. And you're saying deployment as little as five hours for a Motorola. The deployment was really under an hour. The five hours was the POV, the proof, proof of value, value, not proof of concept, to really um, show them what's happening in their environment. Where the where's their sensitive data getting to? Which users are actually doing um, not things that aren't allowed, uh, really allowed, such as um, stealing source code by accident, or, right? By Sending accident. it off to another country. Or making mistakes. A lot of people make mistakes. So most of most of the insider threat issues are caused by people making mistakes. And actually. you're going to catch that with your solution. Yes. Is there anything else you want to share with our readers, our viewers, our listeners? Um, no, I think we've covered everything. Great. This is an exciting interview. <laughs> it was I, great talking to yeah, you. Yeah, and I, I, the good news is I can spell your website too, which a lot of companies <laughs> I can't. So, can you spell my name though? L <laughs> I R O N. Yes. And uh, wait, wait, wait! It's coming to me. Uh, G A L. Perfect. Liron Gal, like Gal Gadot. <laughs> Same person, really. <laughs> She's in disguise today, but you can tell it's her. She just dyed her hair a different color, but it's Wonder Woman. <laughs> and she's at a great company, CyberHaven.com. Yes. Check them out. Visit them as soon as you can. And then come back for another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Thank you. 